Let me start my recording and then we go full screen. And then we say hello, everybody. Welcome again to a lovely little podcast episode I have here. Um, a very chilled one uh, today, but I'd like to do some few quick introductions. There in the orange, you guys might know him from quite a few podcasts already. That is my cousin, Marty. How are you doing today? Oh. Oh, I'm doing really good um, so okay. far, and uh, yeah, I hope you're doing good, and I hope you enjoy this. Thank you, thank round. you. And yes, a special welcome to our first timer, Mr. Sock, down there with the... Is that a dog? Hello, think... hello, yeah, that's a that's dog. My my profile pictures on Discord is also always a dog, <laughs> and my banner is always another dog. It's been uh... like that for five years now. I just saw it animate now. It's like blowing the dog's um, fur in the wind. That's cute. That's very yeah, cute. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm ready for, for September and uh, <coughs> September and October October winds, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Strong on its way. I, I, I'd welcome it with open arms if it means saying goodbye to this cold day. I'm a little bit <laughs> over it already at this point, and we've only entered August, so. Yeah. But anyway, um, so. Technically, spring starts in like. Yeah. No four go. weeks. Well, that's what yeah, I'm saying. It's like specific. four weeks still of this. <laughs> four weeks before like the blossoms come out and the sun comes back and whatever. No, it's a bit torturous. Anyway, so the podcast episode this tonight, as you might have guessed, is we're going to talk about our favorite games. I thought just a chill podcast, you know. We know everyone has their favorites, everyone has their picks, but I thought we would kind of do it a little bit of a creative way. We make it like a little bit of a. A journey. We'll start with a trip down memory lane. You know, um, you talk about first how you got into gaming, what made you like decide, oh, gaming's awesome and fun and all that, um, and then like what games you started playing, and maybe like how as you went on, you maybe got interested into some genres, you maybe got more involved in gaming, maybe in some sort of way, or just kind of had a specific niche i guess you were interested in maybe there was even a specific mechanic in games that like you were very interested in like for example maybe you sought games that were open world because that was just so interesting to you but like yeah and i thought it was just kind of be a kind of a cool journey of self-discovery i think for ourselves to kind of just be more aware of you know what what uh what used to interest us then and what interests us now so yeah i think we'll start with the first question as i mentioned we'll just go around but uh, how about you two tell me, then let's start at the beginning, you know? First games, how did you get into gaming as well? Like, what was it? <coughs> um, okay, well, I'll, I'll start. Okay. So, long, okay, it's not a long story, but um, pretty much, so Armin, you actually... Oh, okay, no, sorry, no, sorry, actually. So back in, I was five years old, back in 2011, mm-hmm. and um, I had this note, I don't know what, uh, it was one of the first phones in a series, of the note series, whatever, but it had a typical soccer game, but mm. I was very pixelated and so on, but I just kept playing that over and over and over, I just couldn't stop playing for some reason, and um, and then also at the time I had a Nokia, <laughs> Where yeah. I played a Red Bull game and um, another cave Bounce exploration. Tales. I can't remember what it's called, but um, I mean, that pretty much led up the foundation. And <clears throat> on weekends, I would go to my one of my friends who had a PlayStation 3, just before the PlayStation 4, and um, we would play racing games and so on. Mm-hmm. And after that, when a PS4 finally came out, oh, well, sorry, well, first, you, I mean, you got an Xbox before us, like yeah. two years before us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> And we all used to go to him a lot, and I mean, one of the first games that actually got me into gaming was Minecraft, mm-hmm. as you know. Good, and, good. Yeah, was, when, I, when I first bought that gold house, it was just uh, it was amazing, and I started, uh, then we got an Xbox later this year, and uh, just everything went from there, and now yeah, I'm being on PC, so it's, it, was, it was a big... It's a big progression, but I mean that's where I am now, and I mean that was pretty much the foundation. Just thinking, it started from a note three or something, I think. Yeah, you kind of, if I look back, you did kind of go like hopping into almost every single type of console or media there was yeah. out there, and I kind of oh, sorry, in the I PC at the end here. Yeah, 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 no, it's interesting. But uh, I have an interesting point, Mike. But first, you tell me, sock. Where did you start from your side? <laughs> Yeah, so, um, Marty, I don't know if, if BMD told you, but I'm a bit older. 
Mm. I'm not super old, but I'm no longer young. So <coughs> when you said you're five in 2011, I, my eyes grew big a bit there for a second. No, um, <laughs> oh my, 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 my interest in gaming started also on a PlayStation, but like the PlayStation 1. Mm. Oh, when it no. was released, oh, I was dude. seven years old. Wow. And oh. yeah, my, between my brother, my cousin and I, we all fought, fought, fought to play. We had Tarzan. The f- hmm. on, we had Tarzan and Gran Turismo 2. Uh, yes. Those were the only two games we could afford at the time. So that's, that's how I started gaming, like sitting next to my brother and my cousin, because they're both like three and four years older than me. <laughs> they would play, and when they got bored or needed to go do something else, I would, I would take the controller and try, <laughs> try and play, but obviously that didn't work out. So... My real, my real love for gaming only started around 2002, 2003. And it started in two parts. The first thing was we got our first computer at home. Mm. It was a big bulky machine. It had dial up. Like <laughs> literally, we, we, if, if, if someone was on the phone, we didn't have internet. Yeah. And my brother got bootleg copies of Final Fantasy VIII <laughs> and Fable. Oof. And we never finished Final Fantasy VIII because obviously if you're if you're under ten years old, that's a very difficult game to play. But we did we do pride ourselves in saying we got two disc free and then it got too difficult. <laughs> and then Fable Fable One. Not even the last chapters, just Fable One, the original Fable. That was the first game that truly ignited my passion for That's that's the one that I finished from start to finish and I sat down and I played it, and ever since then, it's been RPGs and strategy games. Mm. That's where I... Yeah, that's a pretty solid start. I was going to also make the point that, yeah, as you also mentioned with uh, um, how Marty started on the notes in 2011 and how obviously you started with Gran Turismo 2 and stuff like that. I was going to say it's very interesting also in our context especially because i think all three of us are semi in different age groups like obviously not like wildly different in terms of age difference but like different enough that you're literally a console generation apart let me put it that way which was interesting (laughs) because like for example where for you it started with um the the beginning almost of the like the almost the prime beginning of the proper home console and with the franchises like playstation coming into its own and Xbox later coming to its own and stuff like that. Um, and with PC gaming already at least around a bit and stuff like that. With, for example, yeah, for I someone should... like Marty, he literally started almost at the proper inception of mobile gaming, where it was yeah. like 2011, 2010, where it was starting to turn towards like, you know, they can make better mobile games now. It's not just, mm-hmm. you know, moving a snake around, trying to not eat yourself or moving a few boxes around or breaking a few bricks. It was actual like <laughs> Clash of Clans and you know racing <laughs> games on your phone. Like that was oh, amazing. Just, Imagine this, this tiny screen, like wow! Like that was kind of the revelation I had. Like I don't really I play mean, mobile games. Yeah, I mean it was. It's it's not that different from Marty <coughs> because I didn't have a mobile phone, but we did play Pokemon. Yeah, I didn't oh, even oh, consider it. But we did. We did have. We did have Game Boys, and we did play Pokemon Red, Blue, and Yellow. Yeah. The, ones as well oh. that was also on like a little handheld thing yeah. as well yeah i always no. wanted to, i always um, wanted to try game boy but i've never actually seen one in real life <laughs> you've never seen oh my it is it is an experience marty it's an experience um, i've had it maybe, uh, maybe I'll, I'll there used to be a cheapish one that the one wimpy one used to give away at some point but that was not near game boy that was just a very <laughs> cheapish imitation of one but i was also very funny i got, i used to i got one of those I remember when I was small, I got one of those in my wimp, and I was like, whoa, it's amazing. I can, like, play. Okay. There's, like, 180 games or something on that thing. Like, you tap in a code, and then the game loads up. And it's, like, it's not really. It's, like, the most basic game you can think of, like, two tanks shooting each other, basically. And you, like, go up the level and, like, stuff like that. But, like, I was just like, whoa, 180 games. How did the hell did it fit it on here? Those <laughs> were always great for Tetris. I loved playing Tetris on those. Yes. Yes. Oh, I also remember now, um, back in the 1980s, my dad had a Atari 2600. Ooh, that's oh. nice. 
but he gave it away. I cannot, like, that's also now that I think about it, I, I can't I really see your thing. dad as a gamer. Now that I can... No. Because <laughs> well, my the... parents were not gamers by any sort well, of well, measure. Yeah. I don't think they've ever been gamers, not even remote interested. <laughs> my brother was interested in gaming. I think, um, I remember him, like everyone else, you know, everyone had kind of a family computer at some point, you know, when computers were still in going, coming into that place where it's like a personal computer, you come at home, you get like a family computer. And then like yeah. everyone gets their turn on the family computer and like you had certain <laughs> yeah. privileges and stuff. Like this was even before we had internet. So it wasn't even talking about like, oh, it's my turn on the internet or whatever to, what did we do on the internet even when we were small? Did just browse images or like Google stuff? Like I can't even remember why we were only given an hour on the internet. I was thinking to myself like, just browsing images or like clicking on stupid links. But I wasn't even big enough at that time. I can't remember, yeah, but like our, our I remember problem was a... my mom. Our mom wanted to call our aunt, so it's like, listen, you've got until eight. Oh <laughs> yeah, then you go to bed. Yeah, because mom wants to call her sister. Yeah, see, that's that's a valid reason about like everyone getting internet privileges when you have the dial up and stuff like that. But I legit can't remember. But now before all that, we had a family computer, obviously stuff, and this was before. I think my brother was just like it was. Probably bef just before he dropped out of uni or just after he dropped out of uni. It was like early 20s where he would still like come frequently to us because the older brother at that point was already like done with uni and he went um, overseas to England and stuff to work and stuff. So he was already that side doing his own thing and came back later. But like the younger brother just kind of had now his whole problems with uni and stuff and he was semi still staying here. And I remember he played games because he played stuff like um, he used to also buy nag magazines and stuff like that. Also kind of a way how he had a little bit of an influence on gaming. But like he had the nag magazines and he had the, this gaming. And like you don't remember the games, but you can kind of still see it in your head in a way. I know which games they are now, but I couldn't tell you way back when. Like, for example, he played <laughs> he played Abe's Odyssey, I think was one of them, the platformer. Um, and he played, I think the Lion King games, there was a few of them and as, uh, also Quake, he played Quake, but like I said, you can't ask me that back then cause I wouldn't have known, but like, so he played quite a bit of the strong, a strong part. Oh, and Half-Life. He, he had all the Half-Life CDs. I at some point still had all of the original physical Half-Life CDs. I had Half-Life Opposing Force, Team Fortress Classic. And the other one, and I lost all of them. But I, he had a whole, he had the whole CD case, like the four pack CDs of that stuff. But like, the I orange just, box. Yeah, it was a beautiful orange box. Actually, now that you mentioned it, but that's that. No, that was the name of the of the compilation. It was called Half Life: oh. The Orange Box. Oh. And that's where Portal One was also in. This is this is <coughs> this might be a bit where I can have because I can remember walking into Top CD the day that release is like. Man, I want that. Oh, how much <laughs> is it? 200 Rand? That's too much. Yeah. 200 Rand's too much for this box. Yeah, no. I remember he got that and he was so proud of that stuff. And I remember my first, that was also one of my first, maybe that kind of put me off of gaming for a few years because that's the last memory I have of watching someone game. And then the next memory is like a time jump of at least like three years before I started gaming myself. But like the last memory I had was there was that one mission, I think, in the first Half-Life where, like, you're in the hospital, the Black Mesa facility. They're kind of just, like, you know, you've woken up. You don't know what's going on, but you kind of have to go out now and, like, figure out. And I remember you walk out of the exhibit. Ah, the exhibit. The, uh, the, the, like, the one ward of the hospital. And you turn the corner. And there's, like, one of those, um, those head zombies that's on people. Like, that turns them into a zombie. <laughs> head crabs. Head crabs, yeah. So he's in a room. There's like you, you have this. The only you can you're watching through glass at a room where like one doctor's inside of the room with an with one of those zombies with the head crab on top, and you're kind of watching him. And I think he comes towards the window, and the zombie smacks him and kills him, and then the zombie breaks the glass, and then I didn't know how to move and stuff, so I'm watching the zombie slowly walking towards me because I don't know, like if my brother just left the game on. But I remember, I don't know how to control, so I'm watching the zombie walk towards me, and he's going, yeah! and I'm like, oh, no, please! 
do something, I want to die. <laughs> but it was, it was so scary at the time. And now when I look back, I was like, you don't get, <laughs> it was a different feeling back then. <laughs> no, but anyway, it was good. It was good times. I've, I'm sure everyone, oh, all of you have like your fond memories of stuff of that time period when you first got into gaming and stuff like that. Um, but as, as um, Sock mentioned, he obviously firmly got into RPGs, especially if he bootlegged uh, Founder Fantasy and Fable. Those are two very strong RPG stuff. Very tactical RPGs as well, if you're talking Final Fantasy. That's probably also why I mentioned it's a little bit difficult for a 10-year-old to uh, figure out turn-based stuff and all that. Well, you know, when you're yeah, well it's, it's the, the, the big <coughs> problem that around that time was our hard drive. I mean, our first computer hard drive was only around 20 gigs. Yeah. So you had to be very picky about what you installed on the computer. So we had, <laughs> yeah, that's so true. We eh? had Fable, Fable, which was just about a gig. Final Fantasy, which in total was, I think, five gigs on the drive, and then you switched to discs as well. Mm-hmm. And then the last one was a game we actually bought, which was called Tacky on the Fringe. Which was a space, game, space simulator. <laughs> Yeah, oh, it's, okay. it's it's like th- think elite dangerous like you know the new space yes. games yes tacky on the fringe is it's great uh, is their great grandfather okay okay no i know elite yeah, dangerous so, but yeah yeah so it was it was an experience back then to even manage your game because if if you removed games back then there were no backups of your saves either. no that's true as well like you don't really have I'll circle back to like when I started into gaming to also give you an idea of that because I also didn't really have backups. But um, yeah, no, as you mentioned, you have to be very picky. But as I said, RPGs firmly looks like a clenched. Even now, like most of the games you mostly play now are pretty much RPGs. So I'm assuming that that yeah, no, I've, strong... I'm still I'm st- I'm still very RPG focused. It's something that I enjoy. I I, I enjoyed. MMOs for a long while. Yeah. But now it's switched over basically full time because I realized, you know what? Why struggle shooting people when I can make a magic spell that can kill everyone? If- <laughs> yeah, that's a valid point. It's a valid point. And RPGs just allow you to kind of go beyond, like, if you don't really want a hint of, um, you know, you, just, you want to live in fiction. You're like, you want to immerse yourself in fiction. Hey, here yes, slowly. How are you doing, man? Are your lights back on? Yeah. Hello, Papa. <coughs> Hello. Yo, yo, what's up? Yeah. All right. So we just kind of did the rounds a little bit, talking about our first times into gaming. You know, like that first kind of moment, like the first games we played, what got us into gaming, and kind of like that little trip down memory lane. So. Um, before yep. we continue, how about you guys, you share with us now, you know, what was that first time for you? Putting you a little bit on the spot here, but yeah. Okay, so my uh, first experience was uh, when I got my PS2 in like 2011. Mm-hmm. Uh, my first three games was The Incredibles, Finding Nemo, and GeForce. Damn, uh, GeForce was good. I don't even know how I remember those. I guess they just stood out so well, but... Uh, so that was like my introduction to gaming, and then I pretty much stuck with the PS2. So like, by the time I got a PS4, so I yeah. never really got to experience like the PS3 or Xbox 360 genre. Mm-hmm. Only when I would be able to, like, go to friends' places and whatnot. Um, yeah, I mean it started from there, and then I started getting more PS2 classics like Metal Gear, Spinner mm-hmm. Cell, um, the Need for Speed games. Um, even some sport games to try them out, and the WWE games, you know, like the SmackDown vs. Yes. Raw. Um, I mean, I'm just gonna say it, man. SmackDown vs. Raw was like the peak of WWE. Right now, it's just fallen off. It uh, was. It was. And then, I mean, what else did I play? I played so many games. I- I'm kind of disappointed that I didn't play Jack and Dax, though, since a lot of people like those games. You got it um, now, though. I did play. Well, yeah. I, I, I mean, I'm still on Jack 1, so I'm still going to get through the rest. Um, I did play God of War. Like, I played the first and second one, like, briefly, but I never had, like, 
I was so bad that I didn't really progress that far mm-hmm. out. Like I did the intro. Yeah. But I didn't get further than that. Uh I mean, I guess like I started out simple, man. And then as I kinda got older, I kinda was like, Yeah, bro, I'm gonna do like a whole bunch of classics. And right now I've just been on like on the binge of like a classic games, classics, you know. Yeah. Like I, I recently did I recently did Sniper Volta. I did like all five of them. Um yeah. Which were fun. Those games were definitely like underrated, like a hundred percent. You get uh, a lot of stuff. And then right games. now, right now I'm doing uh, Dragon Dax, obviously. Mm. Uh, and I'm also doing the old Dooms, Doom One, Two, and Three. And then I also downloaded uh, Eternal, so Are you gonna I'm gonna do that. Those dooms, and huh? then, I mean, bro, mm. from what I've heard, Doom One, Two. Are extremely hard because you have to complete all of the missions yes. uh, on nightmare difficulty in co-op. Uh, <laughs> and I don't have two controllers, so it's like it wouldn't be a problem. <laughs> but you can use share play, and you can ask someone to be like, "Yo, can you help me out with this?" But uh, I don't know, man. It's the fact that I have to ask someone is like, "Fuck, man." <laughs> I want. I don't want to do that. Um, yeah. <laughs> but the newer ones are like a lot more easier because there's no nightmare difficulty. Um, like Eternal and 2016 are pretty easy. The only ones, the only reason because is like you just have to complete on any difficulty, do all the collectibles, uh, then it's the online achievements. Mm. Um, so it's not bad, but it's daunting, man. But I would like to go mm. for like a hard game, you know, at some point. Nah, you've been a you've been a guy who's been definitely focused on harder games and obviously completing games like a completionist. I can definitely see you giving that a go. But, um... Yeah. Yeah, no, you... That's been, true. You have, uh, like I said, um, when we heard Sock's story, we would, like, we could, like, definitely tell he, um, now and back then was very, um, a very special place for RPGs, you know, in his, um, gaming and all that. He enjoyed RPGs oh, a lot. Oh, yeah? Um, from your resume, though, I know from your resume, from what I've heard, like, it's basically, like, I don't know, it's almost anything that's fun, <laughs> because it's like, yeah. you, you're you kind of down to play almost anything at that point. Yeah, because I feel like when I uh, <coughs> first got introduced into gaming and whatnot, mm. I wasn't, like, my options wasn't that explored back then, because I was, yeah. like, young. I was, like, in grade one, bro. <laughs> uh, and I stuck with the PS2 for, like, how many years? Like, ten years or something? Ten solid and years. I was like, like, bro, come on, man. Uh, only until I got a PS4 and I was like, yeah, I'm down to like explore everything, bro. Like mm-hmm. ARPGs, RPGs, uh, sim- uh, simulation games, first person games, all, all those things, bro. Mm-hmm. That's it. As once your so, yeah, avenues it's open, great. it's it's way more nicer to kind of try everything. If you don't have that, because also obviously the thing is like when you're smaller, let me put it this way: if you don't have the possibilities, like let's just be honest here. We didn't have the possibility of making money when you were small. So what did you do? You had to ask your parents, can we buy this, please? Like you're tugging on your mom or your dad's pants, can we buy this, please? But then oh, like, you kind of had to, you kind of had to convince yourself or be so sure that you're going to like the game. Because you know, like, if you don't like the game, you have to ask your mom and dad again to buy a game. They would lose it. Like, yeah. why? Bro, oh, I remember going like down to like... <laughs> <laughs> I remember going down to like a center and there was like a cash converters. Yeah. Uh, and I'd always go there. And they this was like in what, 2016? Yeah. And there was still selling PS2 games. And I, I would like always go to the like the aisle where they would store the games. Yeah. But it was always at the back. Um, even like the PSP games, they had a whole bunch. Um, and then I would like scroll through there and I'll just like see what game I would want to get. And then uh, at one point I saw Hitman Blood Money and I was like, wait, I really want to get this. Because <laughs> um, I had contracts, so I, I wanted blood money. And I was like, "Mom, can I get blood money?" Because she was at Ackerman's, and I was like, "She was like, yeah, okay, well, like, we'll think about it." Yeah. Usually, when she says that, we're gonna get it by the time we leave. I was like, "Yes, let's go!" <laughs> and then we like continued through our day. We went to like pick and pay and whatnot, and then went to like some coffee place. And then as we were leaving, went to cash converters to go get it. And I was like, "Oh yeah, boy!" And I remember like reading the manual as we we're going home. I was so excited. No, I used to do that as well. Like you take out a manual out of the front of the, out of the front of the game, and you start reading it because you're like trying to hype yourself. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna be a good time. Yeah, yeah. 
Um, you were saying oh, something. Oh man, I miss those days. You're saying something, Mister Sock. Oh man, you guys reminded me of like the dilemma. That's how. That's how we play games. We want to feel like the game. Okay, like, mom and dad are getting moved for the night. Yeah, we're renting a game. Oh yeah. Oh, and, uh, missed the video. Missed, no, this miss missed the video was good. Missed, missed the video selection was bad. Ten, they only had like ten or twenty. Dial dial a movie before it it had it had a red and red and yellow look. Long before uh, Mr. Video came, they had like they usually had like four fifty games. They would update it every month. PlayStation One and PlayStation. That's okay. I want this game. Let's go see if the other movie has it. Put in okay. Someone else rented it out tonight. I'm putting my name down. I'm gonna come in tomorrow. Hello, Dylan. Damn, bro. <laughs> Is that you, Dylan? Yo. <laughs> I don't know if it's just got modest back. Anyway, so it looks like the friends in the pub made it. I just hope he knows how to turn his mic on. <laughs> <laughs> you did turn your mic on. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Oh, nice. How was the pub? Yes, I am from the pub. No, not. Oh, are you at the? How was the pub? <laughs> <laughs> Instead of from the streets and from the pub, um, pub was good. Pub was good. Okay. Okay, you back home though. Yeah. All right, cool. Well, just quick introductions. You know, Marty and Slow. Um, and then Hello. Mr. Sock is our new joiner for this podcast. So we've got a lovely little full house almost here tonight. Um, but anyways, we're doing the rounds quickly about how when we got into gaming and like, you know, um, you know, what were the first games we played, who, you know, introduced us into gaming and like that whole story. So we've all shared. Um, I kind of know your story of how you got into gaming, but how about you share with all of us and see if I remember it very well. How I got into gaming? Yes, indeed. Uh, my first thing was, I guess, the Nintendo Wii. No, oh, yes. That's also true. Yes, I, I, I played... Um, I played Lego Star Wars on the Nintendo Wii, like a madman. <laughs> Swinging your uh, <laughs> Wii motor around. <laughs> Darth Vader. Yeah, um, and then I sort of, I forgot about gaming. And yep. then um, Armin here introduced me to um, a group of people that played games at his house every now and then. Yes, true. That was before, um, yeah, yeah, that was, that was when we were in school. When we were all in school together. Yep. Yeah, and I guess that's that's when I started gaming, I was playing COD with you, Oaks. Yeah, because I was going to say, you also came very late into gaming. Um, because, I mean, like, you only yeah, started to properly game more or less with us, and that was, like, grade 11 already. Uh, I was 18. Yeah, that was more or less, because I know, but I know, like, I was going to say, like, I thought you were going to be introduced or maybe got into gaming a little bit earlier, just not, uh, you didn't, like, it didn't bite you yet, you know? Like, because I know you you mentioned yeah, before, your dad movie. played Doom, for example. Your dad, like, played Doom like a madman. Oh, yes, I used to play on the PC when I was younger. Yeah, and that was, like, the OG play, um... Dooms. You're playing PC, like, the OG Dooms on PC when they came out. Yeah, my dad was. I played what, Doom 3 when it first came out. Yes. Indeed. <laughs> you played the scary Doom. The one with, that was supposed to like uh, be a sort of, sort of survival horror. Like, <laughs> pixelated yeah, monsters. Yeah, my dad didn't <laughs> want me playing. My dad didn't want me playing, but then my next door neighbors had the game and they let me play. Oh, uh, yes. Also a classic thing I think that all of us obviously went through when your mom or your dad won't, don't want to let you play a game because of an age restriction or whatever, but then you either sneakily do it behind the back or you have a friend who has the game. Remember when my oh, dad bro, I never got to that. Spy for me and I came over to your house to play it? When, yes, when your dad... See, for example, Marty knows... Actually, I was going to also make another point. Marty, you're still obviously still at the point where like 
Well, almost not. You're almost there where your dad or your mom don't have like a say anymore in what you can game anymore or not. But like, yeah. don't worry, you're well, almost out of that. Anymore. But anyways, um, no, I was going to say, like, I do remember a few years back, Marty bought um, GTA. And I'm pretty sure that was also one game my parents were like, because that game somehow always made the news when one was released. Like, we always had like these uh, media sites and stuff saying, don't let your children play Grand Theft Auto. It's bad. I mean, it's, it's, it's literally a game about criminal, no, criminal activity. Shooting hookers, <laughs> robbing banks. <laughs> going into sex clubs that it's 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 predictable that it's that it'll be a problem yeah. that i had that same thing with like um i think when so obviously i didn't play san andreas when it came out because it came out in 2004 that was a bit too early but like when i was like nine or ten some of my friends started like getting san andreas and stuff in their playstations and i remember back then Already, the news the news was doing the rounds like, don't let your kids play Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. It's a bad influence on them. They're gonna grow up to be thieves or whatever. And like, I remember, oh, yeah. Um, I played the first ever GTA when it first came out. Do you even know? <laughs> I was gonna say one of the birds <laughs> I view. That old. <laughs> Bro, burn some yeah. dust off, man. Your actual statue. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was also at my friend's house. No, it was also yeah, at that first, I, I think that's usually... First, the first... Uh, yeah? The first GTA that made its way to us. GTA 3. Oh, yes. I remember I installing that on the old paint. Just... <laughs> <laughs> No, I remember just GTA mostly, like, because when you were at your friend's house and stuff, you could basically just, like, the challenge was, like, how fast or how, like, how many stars could you get? You, like, try to get a lot of stars and then how long could you Classic. survive? Basically, that was, like, the challenge every time we came to friends. I was like, oh, yeah, let's get five stars and then try and survive. <laughs> well, there, there was no, no stars had, in the GTA I used to play. I know that. <laughs> It's kind of surprising that you didn't mention uh, San Andreas multiplayer. That was a thing, by the way. There were, I like, don't spots even on the map it was where you could like go uh, co-op. I don't even yeah. remember it was multiplayer. And you didn't have to play as like two CJs. Like you could play as like one CJ and then like a cop or like, uh, a <laughs> nice. stripper or some <laughs> like random pedestrian. Nice. Actually, now that we're talking about San Andreas, you know what's you know what's very funny now that I think about it. What? Marty has also played GTA San Andreas before, but because of the time period and everything, he has oh, played no. GTA San Andreas because it has been ported to mobile. You know, if you want to feel old, ah. he was able to yeah. play San Andreas ported to mobile. I didn't even know of that being a thing until I saw him playing it on his phone. I was like, I used to play that on a PS2. I was like, yeah, I don't know. he's on his phone, basically. <laughs> yeah. No, it was funny. But yeah, I was going to say just a loose journey. Like I said, um, Slow um, obviously had the thing of like he played a lot of like the classics in PS2 and the classics going forward and stuff like that. And also a little bit of like challenging games and competitive games I know you liked. Sock obviously mentioned he loves his RPGs. His loves is more of the fictional, mm -hmm. rich storytelling type of games. I know he loves that. Um, Dylan, you mostly with your stuff, you you like your shooters. I know you like your shooters. Your more of a PvP, but also, you know, you do like your RPGs now and then. I guess you also like, let me put it this way, you like a game you can play with your friends. I think that's a nice way of putting yes. nice way of putting a bow on it, because um, you're not a guy who plays a lot of single player, I gather. No, I don't enjoy single players I at know. All. Every game I've suggested, you know, I've had this thing like, I know Dylan, for example, likes stuff. Because, like, I'm, I've known her now for a while. Now, I know, like, there's a game and it's like, oh, my gosh, Dylan would love this. But now, now I've got it in the back of my head. It's single player. And I suggest it to him. He buys it because, obviously, it does look promising. And then he, like, asks, oh, you're still playing that game? No, I, I, I deleted it. It's like, why? He's like, oh, it's single player. I can't play with friends. <laughs> I got bored. <laughs> yeah, that's also true. That's also true. Yeah, he probably completed it, like, 100% in, like, 12 hours. He's like, yeah, bro, I'm done with this. This is amateur. No, he's... <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Man, I need a battle pass, or otherwise I'm not going to enjoy this game. At least yeah. two battle passes in one. He needs to have the. <laughs> oh, bro, seasonal boosters. 
He needs to have that seasonal stuff. I finished all that. Stray in two hours. <coughs> yeah, I was gonna say that's your that's your speed run. You need to speed run Stray for a trophy. Come on, Dylan, you can do it. <laughs> speed run Stray for a trophy. You need to do it in under two hours. <laughs> yeah. Did you, mean, you also streamed bad. Stray like... um, a while back, didn't you, Sock? How long did it take for you? Sorry, say again. You also streamed Stray not so long ago. Did you stream Stray or did you just play Stray? I can't remember. Uh, no, I just, I've, I've played Stray twice. I played it literally the weekend it released. That took me around four hours. Mm. Then for the video, I couldn't sleep one night. And I'm like, you know what? It's 12 a.m. I can't sleep. I've got no load shedding until 8 a.m. Let's see if I can record a Stray video. I started 10 past 12 and I finished 10 to 5. Nice. Man's determined. Oh, Stray, Stray is ni- nice. Stray's a nice game because you don't actually. Oh, uh, I'm not sure if I lost you there. Uh, sorry. Load checking. Yeah, no. <laughs> no, Stray, Stray's a nice game because you don't need to think really hard. So it's, it was it was a nice experience playing it into the early morning. Yeah, as I said, you also get a, like a, a different feeling out of chill games and stuff like that. It is definitely. Um. And also, um, so we've not talked about everyone else. And Marty, your games, of course, I know you, it's also kind of, you You also like kind of a mix of games, but I would say mostly, most mm. of your games also revolve around some sort of element of, I guess, playing with friends, would you say? Um, some RPGs, yeah, I mean, you did enjoy Skyrim a lot, when I remember yeah. you got Skyrim and all that, you played Skyrim a lot. Um, yeah, I guess yeah. I, I, it's like, it's difficult to always put a bow or like put everyone's like likeness or something in a box <laughs> when you say you like these type of games. It's just not always true now, is it? Because if you ask me the same thing, I can't tell you what kind of games I like, what types of games I grew in, because I play everything. I literally play everything I get my hands on. Yeah, I mean, like I, I'm, I, I specialize in RPGs and tactical stuff, but like put, put me in Battlefield and I'll snipe people out from across the map. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's true, it's true, and I do, as long as I get enjoyment out of a game, I'm playing it, so, but Marty, your games, like I said, yeah, you enjoyed, I'm trying to think of the most recent games you've been playing recently, obviously, you do enjoy games of a challenge, because you do play Rocket League, and you enjoy kind of getting good at a game, like, for example, you have now spent a lot of time trying to get good at Rocket League, trying to improve yeah. in other games and stuff like that. Do you tell me, what do you think, What do you, how would you sum up what you... How you define yourself in gaming? Um, well, so for most cases, I would, <coughs> I don't know why, but um, I do, I do enjoy competitiveness. Yes. Um, to a certain extent. And once I reach that sense, I'll probably be satisfied or whatever. But also for most parts, most part, oh, yeah, most part, I do enjoy things like action adventure also. Mm. And Story based. As you said, stuff, multiplayer yeah. games. Yeah. Overall. Yeah, that's it. I like being toxic. Dylan's a toxic guy. In Rocket League, he always spams what a save and yeah. nice shot. <laughs> but ironically, <laughs> no. And now we can maybe all think about, like, we can do the rounds again, maybe see what kind of games we grew into. Now that we kind of have established, like, this is how we started, this is where we are now, this is the type of games I have been playing and stuff. For me, as I've mentioned now, when I first properly started into gaming, after that hiatus from Half-Life, like after I had that scare of Half-Life, mm-hmm. took a break of gaming for three years and then came back, I was like seven. But see, at that point, when you're seven and stuff like that, like you only, when you go to your friend's house or your cousin's house at that point, you're like, Mama, can us Papa, can us my nephew to gaan, can us Essie to gaan, can us Mikey to gaan, whatever, you know? <laughs> You're not, you're not, you're like, when you're seven and stuff like that, unless they had a system like that, you're not inherently thinking about games. So when I went to people's yeah. houses at that age, it was like more or less, most of the time we played outside at that point still. Like that was, that was mo- a lot of my childhood at that young age still. We played outside and stuff like that. So I never got exposed to gaming, you know, at a friend's place. And then I don't remember what triggered it, but I remember when, we in grade one or grade two, my mom and my dad, like I said, my mom and dad not being gamers. So I don't know where they got the idea from. I don't know if they just decided, you know, let's give them some sort of entertainment thing. They bought a PS2, <laughs> a PlayStation 2 for myself and my sister. 
And at that point, I didn't know about it. So like, it's not that I have this reaction like, oh my gosh, it's a PlayStation. I was like, whoa, what's this thing? You know, I had that <laughs> like, kind of like a interested, curious reaction. And then we had four games. We had Pro Street, uh, the Need for Speed game. We had The Sims 2. Um, we had we had EA Sports Rugby 06. <laughs> Amazing game, that one. Um, I can't remember the other one, but oh, SingStar. SingStar was the fourth game. Those were the four games we started off with. And like I said, my, my sister and I, not really knowing about gaming, because the only gaming we saw was my brother on the computer. And like, we didn't know how it works. Mm-hmm. Now I'm seven, she's five. So we're sitting there trying to figure out, you know, what's going on here. And we kind of get a, we kind of get a thing going. You kind of get interested because obviously the two games we can more or less play, obviously I can't drive in, pro, in Need for Speed at that point to save my life. So I'm just watching the car and I'm like crashing it into a tree and stuff like that. But it was entertaining for me because I was like, whoa, look, mom, I'm driving. Look, it's me. It's like, like, it's like you on the road. And I was like, I flipped the car. I was like, oh, it's not you on the road. Mm-hmm. But um, we had that and we had rugby, which was entertaining. So I got where like my brother would come play and he'd always beat me in rugby. And I would come become like a sort of competitive challenge. Like, I'm going to beat you one day. I'm going to beat you in rugby. I'm going to show you one day. But like I said, it didn't really latch on to me at that point. It was fun. But it was kind of like a, a distraction fun. It wasn't like a, a fun, like a hobby I can latch onto and stuff like that. And when I, um, I had the PS2, but I had the PS2 for very long. See, I had the PS2 at least from 2006, and I only got rid of it in 2019. And I'm very, I'm actually, I still regret getting rid of it because I, I, I tell myself I should have kept it. But yeah, that was sad. But um, no, bro, you should have kept the PS2. I know. I, I still got mine. I know. Uh, I I I I've gave away all my systems. I gave like I gave them away to people I thought would would um use it more than I would. So I did try and do it for good cause, but I still kind of regret it. Like for example, the my, one thing I do regret though, yeah, is that I didn't bring all of my games. <clears throat> mm. Mm. My PS2. I brought like a select few, and I actually regret it. Yeah, but see that, that that's oh, what man, happened. Pain. That's what happened with me and PS2 as well. Like um. I kind of kept all my games at some point because obviously at that point digital was not a thing. So physical was the way to go. So I remember I started to gather a collection. And like, obviously, as I said, I didn't really get into gaming a lot in the beginning. I had rugby and rugby kind of fueled me in, in a little sense because like I said, competitiveness with my brother, trying to get better at the game and stuff like that and trying to learn about I mean, you're still young, so not trying to figure anything out. Um, and then I went to a friend's house we were in like grade three or four at this time. And as Slow mentioned now, now he had one of those SmackDown versus Raw games. And like, you know how it's kind of a surreal feeling as well. You're playing a game, but it's something you've watched on the TV before. Like I've, I've seen WWE. I, I've seen John Cena and now he's in a game. And I'm like, whoa, look at this. This is amazing. <laughs> so that was like one of the first times I got a kick out of it was like seeing like all these cool people, like obviously the Undertaker as well and stuff like that. You know, he was scared. You're hiding behind the couch from the Undertaker because he's coming out of his eyes rolled back everywhere and he's like, rest in peace and whatever. And like now I'm playing him in the game because everyone would just pick Undertaker because he's like freaking rated 98, 99 in the WWE game. Yeah. Every he's time. He's an overpowered character. He is an overpowered character. But it was so fun because that was the first time... <laughs> As was actually also the first time I experienced Gamer Rage. I remember <laughs> it's not, no, it's not one not explaining the rules to me. And I remember I was playing as John Cena because I loved John Cena as a kid. I loved John Cena as a kid. And I got my ass kicked in the game. And they pinned me and everything in the game. And I got so mad because like John Cena doesn't lose. John Cena doesn't lose. And now I lost as John Cena. I got so mad in the game. I cried. I took my shirt off and I cried. At my friend's house. I don't, I don't know why I had that reaction, but it was so oh, funny for me just having that reaction. And then I realized something bit me, you know, in terms of there's a like, gaming bug is starting to bite me because I started to take a genuine interest in, in it. And then because of my exposure, I started to get heavy into the sports games. So at that point, you know, you had the big rivalry between FIFA and PES. 
FIFA best, FIFA best, you know, that everyone like PES is better. No, FIFA is better, yeah. PES is better, whatever. Um, I had PES for a long time. Uh, where I bought like every that's also a thing, trying to convince your mom to buy the same game. Because obviously they're not stupid. They know what they bought like a few games back. So like I'm buying PES 2009. I, yeah, I got PES 2009 and the next year, Mom, can I get this game? I thought you had this game. No, this game is the new one. What's different? <laughs> I can't explain to you what's different about the game, but I want the new one. Um and I stayed with sports game for a long time. And as you can probably tell, it's like not a lot of multiplayer stuff. Didn't really have internet still at this time. Didn't really like you go to your friends and you take your game with, but that was about it because you like just have to get the person of two controllers or whatever. Um, and then obviously when I got into, so I kind of went just with the popular games at the beginning. So like then I went to my friend's house when I went into high school and stuff like that. I started going to more to friends' house where we would game. This is now the gaming group that uh, Dylan mentioned. We started really hanging out in like grade eight and stuff like that. So we came to their friend's house. And I remember when we were grade eight and stuff, the, this game was still pretty big. Um, it was the first time I've ever seen it. I've played Call of Duty 3 before from a Mr. Video. So like literally that was my experience of <laughs> Call of Duty. I didn't know of any other Call of Duty game except Call of Duty 3. So I my in my thought process of what Call of Duty was like, oh, it's the World War II games, you know? And then I go to my friend's house and he's saying, do you want to play Call of Duty? And I'm like, yeah, okay, sure. Like, I thought we were just going to, because at that point, I didn't even know Call of Duty had multiplayer. I thought he meant the campaign. Like, we're going to take turns and play the campaign or whatever. Come to his friends. I was like, what's this? Why is there zombies? Black Ops 2? What the hell is this game? And then that one, that was like the freaking firecracker under my ass. As soon as I played, um, Black Ops 2 and zombies and multiplayer and that for the first time. I I just like threw my hands in here. It's like, yeah, I want an Xbox 360 and I want to play this with everyone. And then, yeah, as I said, Journey went on, played all the popular games on 360, really started to grow more into like still a lot of sports games because we had a lot of rugby's, a lot of FIFA still on the 360 and stuff like that, and shooters came along. And then only later in PS4 time, when I got a PS4, that I properly start going to genres. Because at that point, when I got a PS4 and stuff, I could afford my own games. Like, I didn't have to, like, tug mommy or daddy's leg again to come buy me games. Because then otherwise you just pick the popular ones, the ones you knew. Like, then I started to experiment into games. And then, um, you know, as, uh, <coughs> As the others have mentioned, we're going into an absolute binge. I went into an absolute RPG binge once I got into because that was the first time I got exposed to all of the RPG genres. First time I played Skyrim was like on the PS4. First time I played um, The Witcher. First time I played, you know, any almost any RPG genre was only about the time I had a PS4, and that's when I properly started the push of like, I wanna, I wanna see. I wanna play more games. I wanna play more types of games and stuff like that. And that's how I kind of grew into this whole thing. From a, you know, kind of from a kind of like isolated perspective, until like going bit by bit by bit into seeing more, um, more of exposure to other people's places and learning about other games. Until then, the full on one. Once I had my own, I guess, independence when it comes to that. That's my story, though, of how I grew into the games I like today. Um, I'll get to my last part of my story in a little bit, but how about you guys tell me your story now of how you grew into games. So, Marty, since you are to the right of me in this little box, and uh, you told us that you started on your little Note, your Samsung Note 3, with your uh, racing games and your bounce tails and all of that, what about your games? What other mobile games did you play? <laughs> So, um, yeah, as I mentioned, so I probably started first of Clash of Clans back uh -huh. in 2014. Yeah. And my two stepbrothers had it on our phone. I wasn't really allowed to play games at that time. I was very strict in the house. <clears throat> so <coughs> what I did is we had a set time, I think from 6 o'clock till 7 o'clock I could play mm. for an hour. So, yeah, I quickly um, made some troops and things <laughs> like that and <laughs> upgraded what I could and... <laughs> Then the next day when I came back, I, um, yeah, it was the schedule and so on. I forgot about, and like, times so, when you were allowed to play, actually. But go on, go yeah. on. 
<laughs> anyway, so yeah, and t- on 2017, uh, sorry, 16, I got cl- Clash Royale. I'm for the first time, and I had uh, I had a cat phone, one of those freaking brick things. The unbreakable also, also, thing you managed to break is what you're trying to say. Uh, yeah, so I was at Armand's mm. house, and um, the, sh- the expo was in a shop. So I was like, whoa, what? But, um, it was still like really big at that time. So um, I purchased it, and I just ha- I had just enough coins for it, and um, then my game just only crashed, and the thing fro- my phone froze. <laughs> so I- <laughs> and when I um, went off the st- stairs, the phone oh. fell off my hand and hit hit a type of like I say um uh the the uh, what do you call it the edge of the um hand the railing, railing basically or something like that. Yeah, then it's found on it's found on it's flat on the screen, and um, when I tried to turn it on, it did display the logo, but it was an infinite loop of turning on and turning back off the whole time. So I just couldn't get past animation. But anyway, so I read I read Alan Cash <laughs> we're all back in twenty seventeen and got obsessed with it. And yeah. Yeah, you um, kind of more got led into as I said, because of um the timeline, you kind of got more led into gaming bottom mobile bottom mobile games. Which is obviously uh, like yeah, as I, I said, really that's the first PS4. access to gaming. That was your first access to gaming. Yeah. Yeah, I really wanted PS4 at the time, but um yeah, I got denied the whole time. Mm, but the, I was going and, to mention the nice thing about like by the time you grew up is back in our time, obviously games weren't well. Let me put it this way: games weren't free. Like you didn't get something like a yeah. free game, or so you got demos. Sometimes you got demos. I mean, the, if you really knew how, you could get many games for free. You could. <laughs> I was gonna say you could bootleg it like yeah, you did, or you could flash it like APK some other people it. did. I'm yeah. just saying. You could. I was. I, I'm. I'm trying to talk legally here, guys. I'm not trying to give anyone else ideas out there about remember, like what to do. Remember, remember my WWE mobile game? Yes, I do remember your mobile WWE <laughs> mobile game. I pirated that. I've done it from App. Okay. Uh, uh, what do you think? Uh, <laughs> APK, APK downloader. Apptoid, yeah. Apptoid, yeah. and he's just done the OBB files and stuff from that. I downloaded Pokemon Go as an APK. Nice. <laughs> nice. Amazing. Amazing. No, I I remember mostly from my cousin, like, as I said, because obviously um, I watched him grow up, basically. Um, because me and him mostly, like, at that point, because the gaming bug bit me, seeing him play games and stuff, we got along, like, really well. Because my other cousins, my older cousins and stuff, didn't really have an interest in gaming. They had yeah. semi. They like to like play games like Singstar and stuff because we had Singstar, so it's nice, you know. Singstar is an easy game to introduce to non-gamers. I I miss games like that. That's are interesting or easy to introduce to non-gamers. Like Singstar is like easy. You pick a song, you sing, Wah, karaoke, you know, or even Kinect games where you just you. dance. Yeah. Kinect Rush. Yes. That's you. Again. Yeah, that's you. Is also an amazing game for non-gamers because it's yeah. kind of like it's literally just almost like a. It's almost like a, 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 a social game. It's a very nice social game and stuff like that. So, but anyways, like I said, my older cousins really wasn't interested in gaming. My sister, at that point, was still very annoying to me. So I didn't really want to game with her because they obviously siblings and stuff like that don't mesh well. So my cousin was the one I kind of gamed with a lot. Um, and I remember his mobile games and stuff like that, which was, it was always <laughs> funny to me because it's like he comes over to my house and, you know, we play on stuff <laughs> like that. And then he was like, but his genuine interest is like, I have the the PlayStation or the Xbox here and everything, and we can play. And then someone's like, no, wait, wait, I'm a Clash of Clans match. No, no, no. <laughs> the funniest, the first thing was, um, so Armin introduced me to Fortnite in 2017. Oh, yes. Back in season two. So I, I just <laughs> wanted to win. And um, I remember still, I was second with RPG and the guy killed me anyway. I was uh-huh. so bad. So I started liking Fortnite so much. And <laughs> the, <laughs> There's a mobile ripoff called Credit Destruction. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you streamed that uh, one as well, awful. I remember. Yeah, it was awful, but I mean, um, after I got an S, I had an S7 phone, I started playing from there, but it actually officially launched on August, I think, 14th on uh, 2018. Mm. Oh, oh, the man with big... the galaxy skin. Yes. Yeah, yeah. He and was. I got the Note 9. He October, was. Yeah. When he got the Note 9, he had the Galaxy skin and everything. I remember. Yeah, he was so skin, proud yeah. of himself as well. He'd stand in the game, like doing his emote, like, whoa, look, I got a Galaxy yeah. skin. <laughs> I, really, I really wanted the Note 9, and I can't believe I actually got it. But, I yeah. remember. All right, now, Mr. Slowly, you 
told us you started off with your PlayStation 2. You had it for very long. You had it. Yeah. Uh, you were playing all those lovely classics like the Need for Speeds, and you <coughs> you went to Cash Crusade a lot of games because obviously I understand the hustle. You know, it is yep. part of the hustle and all that. But tell me, tell me. So now, when did it? And you you did the leap. You didn't really have PS3, Xbox 360. You did the leap to PS4. But tell me, how did you grow into the gaming? Where did you? Where did it start to kind of get interesting? Uh, I mean, it started as soon as I got a PS2, man. Like, so it's straight I was off, playing man. Incredibles, and yeah, uh, like straight off. Okay. And I was like, man, this is like entertainment, bro. But it was, I think it's this also nice for you. Food. Sorry, I just want to say, I think it's also great for you, because the game you started off with, you said Incredibles, GeForce, and Finding Nemo. Yeah. That was great games as well, because like, Obviously, the media is there as well for it. Like I mentioned with my WWE, I watched WWE on TV. I was like, whoa, look at WWE on PlayStation. Now, for you, probably might have been also the same thing when you were younger. But like, you saw WWE, ah, WWE, you saw The Incredibles on TV as a movie. And now you're playing yeah. as like all the characters and you're playing like playing Nemo yeah. and you're playing like G Force and like, oh, yeah, it's sort of in a movie. It's so cool. Wait, did you yeah, play man. the Finding Nemo game, like the first one? Yeah, yeah, I did. I played that game. Bro, <laughs> that game was so good back then. I was well, so you happy. Like, pop the bubbles. He has like pop bubbles to him. Yeah. <laughs> this guy's reminiscing about yep. Finding Nemo. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about that game. I was used to play the Cat in the Hat back then. Nice. How do you play Cat in the Hat? Do you just have to rhyme words? Oh. No, it was the Cat in the Hat, but it was like the whole Cat in the Hat universe, and you were like, it was like first person, and you had to like do obstacle <coughs> courses. And then the final boss was that like bad guy in the movie, and he had like a whole machine, and he would like <laughs> try and kill you with it, and you had to like kill him instead. What kind of freaking messed up story is this? Yeah, man. That's not how I remember the movie. Then, bro. That's not how I remember the well, movie. I played on PC though. But yeah. See, for slow it was easy because if you go, if you, if if that thing bit straight away into gaming, I mean, like you were set at that point. You were set. You would run away, and like it would probably now stay with you until like forever. So, good on you, man. Yeah, until I actually start balding and then actually get like a receding hairline, and then I'll probably just give up. That's but, not too uh, long until from then, now. bro. I'm still going strong. That's not too long from now. Look at mine. If yeah, I pull, surely. If I pull this lovely fringe back, look at my. <laughs> it's not too long, man. Anyway, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Sock, you said you from your side, you was oh, fully into that uh, fully fledged like PC home computer era. You bootlegged games, but shh, don't tell anyone that. Um, and you also had the the pleasure of playing all the classics that like I can only dream of, like Gran Turismo Two and all that, but you had to wait for your turn on the controller. Oh, uh, that, that ended in, like, 2002. Because 2003, <coughs> my father was like, listen, I'm giving your brother the home computer, and you've got to wait a few weeks. You're getting your mom's old office. So around 2003, I got my first computer. We also got a PlayStation 2. Yeah. And for... Birthday for my birthday that year, I also got a Game Boy Advance, a small silver one that like. Kind of lost you there again, but I heard something about a silver Game Boy. <laughs> oh no! Don't tell me it's load shedding started. Did this... we actually lost them? No. Oh, no. Uh, he probably got low shooting. Did you? No, I hope not. He's, his low shooting should only start at 10. Um, anyway, let's give it a few. So, Dylan, you told me, as I said, I know I knew of this, but like very recently, like you were very late into gaming, like properly into gaming. You've played games before and very, you know, late afterwards, you only got into gaming and stuff, but you got into gaming proper. But also, you've been more of a person who's also kind of 
kind of been like, meh, maybe I don't want a game anymore. Meh, I'll game now and then, meh, you know, because obviously you do juggle responsibilities and all that, but like, so tell me, why why, why is gaming keeping you around? What is it about gaming that that is keeping you around? No, don't tell me we lost Dylan as well. Oh, we didn't. Are you talking to me? Yeah, because I'm like, <laughs> I, I thought like, well, we'll talk to you while we wait for Sock, because I'm not sure if his internet now died or not. Back, it's back. It's back. Okay. Was, it's 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 load shedding hitting the Vodacom towers. Okay. So <coughs> I see what you I mean. have to switch. I have to switch over. Okay, where did you guys lose me? Silver Game Boy. Ah, Silver Game Boy. Okay, yeah. So that's kind of where it all accumulated, because I I always had my Game Boy on me even. Cool. Yeah. And I all I only played Pokemon. <laughs> Pokemon Sapphire was my game. I think I had almost a complete Pokedex. Uh, the, the problem was I knew no one else with a game. So I couldn't trade couldn't trade legendaries with Pokemon Ruby or Emerald. Because there was just nobody else. And there was no hacking stuff back then. Or plugging it into your computer to but my my proper gaming experience started when my brother entered high school and we both went to a both went to John Forster which is a technical high school so that means everybody had had their own computer Mm. their own systems and everything (coughs) and we started landing oh yes well most of our weekends every second or third weekend we would go to some new new person's house and we would play we had obviously we had all the classics. We had Counter Strike. We had Frozen Throne. Well, now that I think about it, those were the two main things we played. Because if you had Frozen Throne, you had about a thousand other. <laughs> so that that very quickly started introducing me to all the wide world of games. Because obviously, at each LAN, if you're eighty. Gig- your 120 gig hard drive, trade games, trade anime, trade movies, trade series, trade everything you can. Mm-hmm. We did that until 2012. Around 2007, though, I, I traded in the PlayStation, PlayStation 2 for an Xbox 360. Oh, yeah. And that's also where we got our love for rhythm. Uh, somehow, despite my brother being three years older than me, I got a job before him in high school, and we bought. We we agreed together that okay, the first thing we're gonna buy when we get our paychecks, Star Hero Two. Oh yeah, yeah, that 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 was a big back then. Everybody played it. If you didn't have Guitar Hero 2 at your house, nobody would visit you. <laughs> yeah. So, that, that, that was my initial, like, big block of LAN experience, because we played, we played Counter-Strike, <coughs> and then we played Counter-Strike Source. Yes. And then eventually, in 2011, we started with Counter-Strike Go. That's why I have made my Steam account. Because you needed Steam to play CS:GO. To play yeah. CS:GO. Mm. So that's that was the only game that for the, for for half a decade that I had was Counter Strike Go. It's all, nothing else. Nice. Why 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 do I need Steam? I've got all my other games like on DVDs and Blu-rays and whatever the hell else. But yeah, that's how then that's how Steam started his digital library. <laughs> yeah, That's where it all now, now, now I also need to put all my chickens in order because, like, from 2010 onwards, it, became, it becomes crazy because I did eventually start getting into Battlefield. Mm. And I can't, I, during that time, I didn't buy any any RPG, I mostly played MMOs. And yeah. this, nev- I never played World of Warcraft, line at least. We had our own server that wasn't official. And I'm pretty sure Blizzard would not like <coughs> like that. Yeah. Uh, but just I played I played Freestone, played Lost Ark. Uh, not Lost Ark, Lost Lost Chaos. 
was the game's name. Lost yeah. Chaos, we played Ice Line, Aura Kingdom, Ragnarok Online 1. And... But I played all of those. That's that's what kept the RPG bug alive here because you couldn't you couldn't play those games just beside us. Just just getting to level twenty that took us over just grinding. Yeah, but that's the and, nature of MMOs, eh? Yeah, that's the nature of MMOs. The other problem was none of us had ADSL on cap. We all had those <laughs> Vodacom two gigs. That's what you get a month. Nice. <laughs> so, nice. So it became a thing of, okay, Carlu has uncapped at his house. He's going to download all the updates for us. He's going to use, going to get the patch for, patch all the patches for us on our YouTube. Monday is going <coughs> to bring it to you. Then tomorrow you've got to take it to the next guy and the next guy and the next guy so that we can all play for two hours on Saturday. <laughs> nice. All that for a weekend or a semi. You, you, had to be, you had to be very careful because if you open, you open one of those games without patching, it could easily be four or five games patch. Yeah. And nowadays, Vodacom and MTN and all of them are very nice. Like if you go over your internet cap, they, they immediately cut you off. Yeah. No issue. But back then, there was about a two day delay. Ooh. So if you went over your cap, which still stayed, it would download. So there were times when my brother was playing games and it would start updating in the background. Um, Five gigs later, end of the up? month, Bill comes in. Yeah. My mom and dad looks at this, it's like, uh, why is it 4,000 Rand? I, I was going to say I did something the same way, but it, like in the modern times, because my mom had a pay-as-you-go contract on her phone. But she got, a, mm -hmm. she got a new phone, right? She got a new phone with like 20 gigs on it. Like, you know, when you get a new phone, they give you an exorbitant amount of data. Like, um, but then the thing, <laughs> the catch about the data is it expires in a month. So like the point is use it or lose it is kind of the thing. But she had a pay-as-you-go phone. I didn't know it's a, the pay-as-you-go part. I thought it was a top-up like mine. And Battlefield 1 just came out. And now my Wi-Fi at that time, it was uncapped, but it was exceptionally slow. Actually, it was the beta. That's why it was, had to be so urgent, because the beta was only for a weekend. But I had uncapped, but the uncapped was exceptionally slow for downloads. Like it, I think it literally said 99 hours. So I was like, I'm going to miss it on the weekend. And I thought to myself, ha, oh, my mom doesn't use data, obviously, because like, what does your mom or your dad do on their phone? They freaking, nowadays, they might waste all their data on like WhatsApp <laughs> images or, you know, good night stickers or whatever. But like back then, they didn't really have WhatsApp or anything. Like that. So literally, all they did was call, you know? So I thought, oh, brainwave, I'll just use my mom's new data she got. I looked at her phone, I was like, okay, 20 gigs, you know, it could speed up because... <laughs> The beta wasn't the beta wasn't <laughs> that big. It was like fifty gigs. So I thought like halfway, and then the uncapped will do the other part because then I can go to bed and leave it like running. <laughs> and I did it, and I, I leave the phone there, and I'm watching the thing. I'm literally watching the thing, and it goes to twenty. I'm like, okay, it's gonna stop now. I'm watching it climb to thirty. I was like, wow, it's still climbing. Maybe it's a glitch in the phone. Watch it climb to forty. Okay, it's still going. The phone must be fine then, because I mean it's still going. So maybe there's more data than, than I thought of. I thought like maybe it's night owl that it's like transferred over. Looking, it's like oh, the download's done. Wow, it took like four hours. Give the phone back to my mom. I was like, okay, it's finished. Thanks, mom. <laughs> the bill comes at sixteen thousand. That month, I was Ooh, I was wow. sitting there like <laughs> the play. I <laughs> was it that much? <laughs> yeah, sixteen thousand. And then I like she had to call that. No, we called Vodacom oh. to tell them there was a glitch or something, and they bumped it because we were so loyal customers. They bumped it down to three thousand. Okay. <laughs> when the first no. bill came through, it was sixteen. I was over, I was on the edge, like I was about to get fifty lashings, like literally, like they knew it was me because I I asked them to borrow the phone so I could help down the game and stuff like that. <laughs> But it was it was almost the end of me. That that does remind me of the 2010, 2011s as well. 
Yeah. Blackberry first entered the scene. Get get a Blackberry of uncapped internet on the phone. B I S. And there was a trick. I I, I got. I, I was I was fortunate. My mom didn't run an upgrade, so I got like the latest BlackBerry, the BlackBerry Torch. Yes. And it 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 linked differently than the older BlackBerry. So when I linked it to my computer, mm. still picked it up as mobile data. Mm. So for I think until 2012, I had uncapped data on my phone, my nice. computer as well. I I anyway, had that any, with my that's how I got. Anyway, uh, I was actually I'm I'm almost done with the history. Yeah, yeah, go on. Uh, yes, in 2011, I finished high school, 2012, started college, and by then I had an Xbox 60 as well, mm-hmm. and I got myself in the DS, then, yes, then, for the next years, I mostly played Star Wars Battlefront. It's an old game that I played, also an MMO. Then eventually, when I started working, fifty. Let's let's start filling up. If you go on my Steam now, you'll see it's it's definitely not only go, but it's the same with my EA account, my GOG account, and my Epic account now as well, because I very quickly figured out okay. If just sit in the right spot, right time, buy game next to nothing, or you can buy humble bundles or anything else like that. And I've very quickly spiraled out of control. <laughs> where I think about 90% of my li- entire library I've not it's just played. It's just I wanted the game, I, I or I had played the game like half a decade or a full decade ago, and I know I like the game, I want the game. So I bought it at sale, and that's where we. That's when I eventually end of where I would need to find a real play. If I just sit at home every evening, I actually end up watching YouTube or doing nothing. That's when I started playing. As you, as you. Where yeah. that's the main thing that I play on stream because it's the only thing I can be good. Yeah, well, that's also the the void that gaming fills. It, it's nice to have it fill also a void of like you don't want to do nothing. At least be kind of productive. Mm-hmm. And it's it is a time killer. If you're working full time, you don't have time for it. But as soon as start working from home suddenly you find yourself with three or four hours extra yeah no that is true like i said and you have to fill that void somehow now on to mr final one complete your journey of us mr dylan your very late start to the journey but as i said now um you you've also kind of been on and off about gaming so tell me how how, why has gaming kept it around I've been thinking about it, and um, I actually started gaming when I was about four years old. Oh, now it's the, um, now it's nice and early. Okay, nice. <laughs> um, I finished <coughs> like one of the first Sonic games when I was six. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah I played Sonic back then. It was Sonic and Monster Trucks and. Uh, some car derby thing that I used to play. Maybe just and to the main game sure. I played was the main game I played was Command and Conquer Three. Ooh yes. Now you're getting into nice territory. Um yes, yeah, so I finished Command and Conquer Three. Uh and I sort of then went to my cousin's house and he introduced me to Guitar Hero. Mm-hmm. Which I couldn't get myself because I was denied a console. The first console I ever got was my own that I bought. The PS4. It was a Xbox 360. While you all had PS4s. Oh yes, sorry. Yes, yes, yes. You got a three. I forgot (laughs) about the 360. That was all I could afford. I remember the 360 though. Um. Yeah. So I sort of. Yeah. I was about 
11 when I started, I like started and finished <coughs> Need for Speed Most Wanted. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I've pretty much been playing, I played first GTA. Yeah. Um, and then when I went to high school, there was no PCs technically mm. after eighth grade because when I was in eighth grade, we turned the computer, like people could go and do like projects and stuff on the computers in the like library at school. Mm. Um, one of my friends got a Halo game on a memory stick oh, yeah. that he then copied onto everyone else's memory sticks. <laughs> and we all plugged our memory sticks into all the computers in the library. And we um, we all played a LAN game like you that. You all released a virus into the library. <laughs> so we were all playing Halo in the computer library in grade 8. Nice. Um, until they stopped us. <laughs> yeah. And then, yeah, then I started playing on my, um, I got an iPod Touch in grade 9. Mm. Um, yeah. That's, yeah, that's also how your Clash I... of Clans journey started, huh? You also started big on the Clash of Clans as well. Just like modern. Yeah, I, I mean, that's when Clash of Clans came out, was when I was in grade 9. So yeah, I yeah. started Clash of Clans. Um, <coughs> it was Clash of Clans. And I was playing Geometry Dash. Mm. Um, and something called Break Hit. Which is like, you got these like metal balls and you have to like, basically like break, break, break basically. some crystals with I think them. Break Break and Break It was almost yeah. the same no. game. No, so it was, it's like a first person game where you like zooming through oh, and you have to oh. break crystals. You have to like tap the screen to break crystals. I remember this. I know this game. I know this game, but yes. Yeah. So you would like get past level one and then you'd have a certain amount left and whatever. Mm. There were 15 levels. Um, and I got to a point where I could play all 15 without dying once. <laughs> yeah. Then you get to the unlimited level. Nice. Um, yeah, and then, yeah, and that was grade 9, grade 10. I started, I had got an iPad in grade 10. So I started playing all those games on my iPad. Um, and then I got Blackberry in grade 10 and started playing the Blackberry games. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I came to Madison Cambridge and started playing with you guys. Yeah, got basically the, joined our lane party. The 360. Yeah, I got the 360. Played Black Ops 2 on my own. Yes. Uh, then I got the Xbox. Played Battlefield. One. Yeah, Battlefield 1, that's the one. So yeah, no, but what I mean is, like, picture. you got an Xbox One when we all had PS4s, is what I'm trying, <laughs> trying to point out. Yes. Yes. Um, <laughs> yeah, that was a bit stupid, but... Um, nah, man, that's a man of mark of true quality, right? <laughs> the man was committed yeah, to... Yeah, I, I, I enjoyed my Xbox. Yeah. And then later on, he got his PS4, and yeah, we've been pretty much gaming online since. Pretty much gaming Yeah, I got online. my PS4 and just never, never stopped. I mean, I stopped for, what, a month? Yeah, you, no, no, you said you were going to, guys, I'm done with gaming. I'm selling my PlayStation 4, which he did. He did sell his oh, PlayStation yeah. 4. And he said, guys, I'm done with gaming. I need to go find a job. I need to go, you know, like work and I need to go study. And I was like, I mean, no, we're understandable because obviously, like, if you don't have the time for gaming, if you want to commit your time to other stuff, that's like what you do. It's like, okay, cool, guy. It's a bit sad because, yeah, we can't play a few, but, you know, I'm wishing you the best stuff. He sells PS4 and everything. And a while, <laughs> a few months after, he buys another PS4. He's like, guys, I'm back. I'm back. Go on PS4 again. <laughs> At least, at least you got a PS5, that's, yeah. bro. So that's nice. Yeah, I got. Yeah, well, my <laughs> PS4 stopped working. Yes. Um, as like the PS5s became like more available, my PS4 stopped working. Mm. Mine was also on its, it's way out. Time. That was literally the only reason I got a PS5 
because I got a PS5 when scalpers were really like everywhere and stuff like that. And I got a PS5 for a little bit more expensive. It was, I got my PS5 for 15, which was like, it was more expensive at that time. Um, but I got it like when it was high and my PS4 was on its way out. I can hear more. You can hear when it plays games like stuff. You can hear when something is about to die. And I was like, okay, might as well go buy it because stuff. And I remember, I remember January 2022. This friend group that I've been getting off and everything, I told them I bought the PS5. They're like, ah, you, you kind of jumped the gun, man. I'm telling you, it's going to be nice and cheap when they all come back and stuff. You'll see. You'll see Black Friday, I'm buying one. Black Friday 2022 rolls around. There were no PS5s. They, none of them, except Dylan and Vincent now, have PS5s still. They're all still on their PS4s. I got my, I got my PS5 half part. Yeah, see, you at least had something on a sale and stuff like that, but how long, like, just compare that. Like, if I had to still game on my PS4 for a year, I think it would have died. It would have died before that. So, I would have been in the same Yeah, place. I mean, I, I got my I got my <coughs> PS5, what, three, four months ago? Yeah, more or less. So, like I said, like, if I had to game until then on my PS4, it, it would have never made it. So, yeah. But okay! Now everyone's had their little trip down memory and all their little recollection. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, I think as a final thingy, I'd like to try and ask you a difficult question because I know it's not going to be an easy answer, so it might be a difficult question. But try, now that you've had your recollection, now that you've had known, like relived your journey, try and tell me what genre is the genre for you. Some of you might have easy answers. Some of you might have to have a think about it. But try and tell me what is the genre of your dreams? What is the genre you like most? Who's going well, first? Whoever I mean, wants to go first. Already, it's already been answered. Yeah, the <laughs> same. It's really easy. Yeah, I was going to say, okay, Sock, you know your answer, so how about you tell you tell us your lovely answer. Is it is it a shooter? Is it shooters? <laughs> <laughs> You're very funny. It's RP. Uh, I've, I, I love RP. <laughs> it's something I've enjoyed since the first time I picked up a controller. Mm-hmm. I don't see it. I've, 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 I've got to be on. I've got a leak secret yet. I'm watching Go Carnage playing Baldur's Gate right now, and I'm watching, <laughs> but I'm literally like, I, w- I want to buy the game. Buy it. Buy it. Buy it. <laughs> But as I said, like I said, some of you might have easy answers. Slow, you said you had an easy answer. What's your answer? Stealth games. Hands oh, yes. on. Okay, yeah, I was gonna really I should have guessed that one. I do know you like your metal gear. Obviously you hitman, you 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 did play all the hitmans. Oh um, yeah. Hold on, stealth stuff, I've got a quick remember the old split style game. He does. Bro, okay. I, I have a funny story about this. <coughs> so when I had my PS2, I had Spin Cell Pandora tomorrow. And because oh. I played um, Hitman and Metal Gear, I was used to like the stealth and being a lot more friendly. And then <laughs> yeah. when I tried Spin Cell, it's like a lot more restrictive, you know? Like it's like, <laughs> oh, this mission, don't kill anyone. This mission, you can kill everyone. And I it hated took, that. It took us about half a day just to get through the tutorial stage the room of the glass ground. <laughs> oh, dude. Bro, I agree to that. But you, there was a mission where you're at the airport and you have to like take someone out who's like arriving. And I, I dude, I could not figure out how to do it because I just kept getting spotted. And because like it's so restrictive, if you get spotted, you get sent to a checkpoint. And then I have to mm-hmm. listen to a guy talking to himself for like 10 hours, go down there, get spotted <laughs> again, go back to the checkpoint, listen to him talk to himself like a schizo for 10 hours again, <gasps> then go down the stairs and get spotted again, bro. And then I rage quit. I hit my hand, like I hit my console where the tray was, and now my my PS2 doesn't work anymore. <laughs> so your stealth games yep. killed your PlayStation. Are yep. trying to actually tell us? Yep. Okay. Then. Yep. <laughs> Those were the stealth games. Like when people tell me they like stealth games, I'm like, do you do? You, if you've played that, you like a stealth. <laughs> oh man. Uh, Holy. Okay, Marty. How about since you've also had like now oh. your your fair share of like a quite a wide range of games, so do you feel yeah, like so you can I... settle on a on a genre? Probably considering what I'm playing right now and 
feature purposes, I'd, rather, I'd probably consider anything that offers a general complexity of competitiveness towards the player base. So we just say and PvP, basically, in that sense, if it's competitive. Yeah, most in that range. Because I know, like I said, yeah. I've, I've talked about like how you've practiced in Rocket League and stuff, but like even even the other PvP games, you also were quite like <laughs> like Fortnite, but like um, but other things in general, like you did like the 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 nature of trying to best someone out there. Like it, some people do like that, Probably, yeah. like being able to to say that yeah, like you've put in the hours and stuff like that. What was that? It was about grind. It's about power. Put in the work. Put in the hour. Power, yeah. But anyway, as I said, like <laughs> if that's if that's your thing, that's your thing. That used to be Dylan's thing for a long time. He loved PVPs as well. Yeah. Now, Dylan, yeah. how do you now what do you it, like now? Now it's less of a, a PVP and more of a multiplayer. Mm. Mm. Anything multiplayer, I will enjoy it. Yeah, like I said, if we can play with friends, Dylan's happy. As I said, I've I've discovered mm-hmm. that like a I've stopped suggesting single player games to him now because I'm like I'm just gonna find a free to play multiplayer here in the PS store. And like Dylan, you want to play it? It's like yeah, and then like 200 hours we put into that damn game. <laughs> that was the theme for Destiny. Game. That was the theme for. <clears throat> that was the theme for Rocket League when it went free. That was the theme for. Uh, um, back when we did play stuff like H1Z1, anything, anything you yeah. find played that we were finding fun, we just spent a lot of time on it. Um, I bet yeah. you. Other yeah, than I, chivalry. Yes, other than chivalry, but chivalry, <laughs> chivalry just kind of got like uh, it was fun, but it was a little bit one track, so it's unfortunate. Um, all right, so mine. Um, I bet you wouldn't be able to guess my actual favorite, but I'll I'll walk you through some things, and then you can guess my favorite at the end. But I'll walk you through something. So I said that I started to like stuff like the the when I started to play COD, uh, Black Ops Two with my friends for the first time. I started to really get bit by that bug, and obviously when I started playing, I didn't really ever grow into COD. I played Black Ops Two, amazing. I played Ghosts. Crap, I didn't like ghosts a lot, unfortunately. And I played Advanced Warfare, I was like, oh, okay, it's okay. But then, like, I didn't really get into, and I mentioned in that other, in that other thing that, like, my first, like, rage was 2015. So, like, I saw the Black Ops 3, but I never, I bought back Black Ops 3, but on Xbox 360, which was very restrictive. Dylan also bought it on 360, which was very restrictive. But, like, I never got into COD. Like, I bought it. But I never really got into it. I didn't really have that thing of like... Because I also, at this point, remember, I didn't have internet. So my exposure to COD was playing the campaign, which was never really the strong suit of COD, and then playing local multiplayer only when my friends came over all with bots. <laughs> so like, my COD experience was... So oh, man. I, my, my experiences with Battlefield were way stronger. I even had Battlefields on the PS2. I had... Um, I think Modern Combat was the one I had. Battlefield 2 Modern Combat. I think I had Bad Company. Really good games with really cool campaigns and with large, you know, large multiplayer like type of stuff like that, which was great. That was great for me because like I can play that on my own and stuff. And then as I said, as after I paid 16,000 Rand for it, I played Battlefield 1 like to death because again was an awesome game because, like, it's a way more open-scale battlefield and, like, you can play, like, as anything, as a sniper, as a tank operator, as just someone in the trenches, whatever. It was great, and with what I liked about that. And then, yeah, so shooters kind of was always there, but not really there, because, like, my experience with shooters were, like, Neh. so I didn't really ever go grow bigger shooters. I enjoy a shooter. I do, like, I'll play a shooter like anything, like, and I'll enjoy it, but I wouldn't say it's like, it doesn't rank near my top favorites. RPGs have always been strong after I went on my RPG binge once I got my PS4. It was great, because I got introduced to all the franchises I missed out on. The Witcher is still one of my favorite games ever, obviously, because it's so damn well written. Um, And other things like Skyrim, Dragon Age, all that stuff, loved all of them. Um, But, (coughs) but, um, as I said, I kind of, because I went on the RPG binge, the only damage I did to myself is like every single game 
started to feel samey to me because I played all of them in such quick succession. It started to feel a little bit of the same to me. But like I said, that's just a preference of mine. But um, RPGs, I still rank like pretty high because um, it's an amazing way of immersing yourself in fiction and letting you explore and escape as another character. So amazing games as well, but not really my favorites. Um, sports games, as I mentioned, when I was smaller, sports games were always fun because I said WWE was like, oh, I watch WWE on TV and I could play the TV and like FIFA's and PES were great because like you mess around with FIFA and PES like that. And the great thing is like you can play as any FIFA team or whatever and you can have your own fantasy like oh my gosh guys what if this team wins the big trophy because you know never real life they never win the trophy but you can like play fifa and they'll win the trophy um and rugby and all that stuff before the rugby games got really bad later on but um yeah so and then i but i started to gravitate away from realistic sports games more towards the arcade sports games because i just enjoyed it more i thought if you're playing a game you know if you're gaming and you're having fun with sports and stuff, we could make it more arcadey. It doesn't have to be realistic or simulative. A lot of people like the simulation and want more realistic games out there. And while I agree, it's cool for sports and stuff. I like the arcade ones more. But you have to really lean into the arcade stuff like that. Like the old the old NFL games had like an arcadey way of doing things and stuff like that. But also not really my favorites, as I said. So um, I realized I had a a knack for a certain something as I started playing all these games. I haven't actually played a lot of games in this genre, but I know for a fact it's my favorite genre, which kind of tells me I need to start buying more games in this genre. But if you want to try and guess, try and guess, and any of you, one guess each, what is my favorite genre? Real-time strategy. All right. That's one guess. Jump scares. Horror games, yeah. Go on. I was gonna say horror games. Horror games, yeah. Go on, <laughs> Marty. Um, um, Jobs is already picked. What did you pick? <laughs> no, um, I promise you, it's not Fortnite, so don't guess that. Oh, okay, no. no, 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 no. <laughs> No, Slow had it correct. It is real-time strategy. Um, horror games, I'm okay with. I I do I do get really scared in horror games. I won't. I'm not gonna even gonna lie about it. I get terrified in horror games, but I do enjoy like the because horror games also has a cool thing of like trying to get you to think on your feet, which is cool for a game. Like it it's it's trying to have you quickly assess something like that. But like no, real-time strategy is actually my favorite genre, purely because of like almost any scenario you can think up and any battle you can draw up and stuff like that and you can create your own kind of fictional like it reminds me of when you were small you know you know you're small and you always had those big box of like the toy soldiers or the wrestlers or whatever and you like all line them up and you like draw up literally this battle plan of what's happening like you have all the green guys yeah. and you like put them all over your room and then you go and put all the red guys all over your room and you're like, this guy is going to fight a more. So he blows up a thing and I was like, the come on. And that's how I tell the generals to aim as, you know, that's, so when I play a real-time strategy game, that's what I'm thinking about. I'm thinking about that part of my childhood, which I loved being that like sort of imaginative person. The green soldiers in Toy Story. Hmm? The green soldiers in Toy Story. <laughs> that those ones, yes, those ones, those plastic soldiers, those exact ones. I had a box full the ones, of those. The, one, the, the one. ones you would tie um plastic bags to for parachutes. Yes, the one that makes <laughs> <laughs> you make them like okay, parachutes. Uh, guys, I gotta run. I'll see you guys next time. No worries. Thank you again, Shock, for joining for the first I'll time. Later, man. Good shedding. <laughs> no, but like to finish out my story, as I said, I haven't mm -hmm. actually played a lot of real time strategy games. I'm a little bit regretful of that. I have played enough to know it's my favorite genre. I've played a lot of Age of Empires, for example, and I loved Age of Empires. I have played Command and Conquer at a friend's house. I don't, I don't own any Command, and Conquer, Command and Conquer, but Command and Conquer is damn amazing. The little time I've played it, I had this other one, one of my first games I've ever owned. Again, I needed to, I didn't have a PC at home that could run it or like play on it, whatever. So I had this, I had this Star Wars real-time strategy game that I used to earn. I can't even remember its name, 
but I had it on PC. I think someone gave it to me as a gift or whatever. And I remember I sat on the back of a bucky driving from school. We sat on the back of a bucky and I'm holding this game like this. Wah! <laughs> because I, I'm, I'm, getting to, I'm going to my friend's house whose dad had a computer. He played Diablo on his computer. So I knew his computer could run stuff. But he, his dad's computer was in. I was like, we're going to play the new Star Wars game that's like going to be amazing. And like even back then, I was 10 years old. And I could tell like oh, the, I loved real-time strategy games. It's just weird for me. Like I never, yeah. <laughs> having never properly played in the genre. I feel like, why would I love it so much? But I know every single time I've played a game of like that, I'm so in love with it that I can't help it. So it's kind of weird. But like, yeah, sometimes you don't can't explain stuff about gaming. Like I said, I can. There's a lot of stuff about like what the games that stand out for me and it's my favorite and stuff. Like that. for example, I can tell you. Some of my favorite games was The Witcher, Red Dead Redemption, um, freaking, what are some other ones? All I can think about now is Red Dead Redemption and The Witcher. Uh, but you get my drift, like all these really big name games, like maybe God of War and stuff, like all these really big name games that make sense to be top of your list. And then what's my favorite game of all time? Death Stranding. Can I explain to you why? True. Not really. <laughs> Not really. I can't really tell you what's my favorite game. It just is. I enjoyed it so damn much. I hated it. I know you hated it. <laughs> I know you. <laughs> I know you hated it because <laughs> it's like the worst. Ones. That was like, like the worst suggestion for Dylan to get as a game. I remember. I got caught. <laughs> it's like that's like one of the last games I suggested to him in terms of single player games because like I that's when it hit me like nothing's gonna get this guy to play because like you can imagine it's Death Stranding. It's like a walking simulator, and it's a single-player game. And I suggested Dylan to it's buy so it. boring. <laughs> I suggested Dylan to buy Damn. this game. <laughs> <laughs> but I loved it. It was my favorite game. So, that's... It's fine. Armin and I played Half-Half. <laughs> yeah, I remember. We did play Half-Half for that game. That's the only reason I could, yes. like, buy it on release and be able to, like, like... Played like so amazing for the first time. Marty, you also got. Did you also get Death Stranding like from me or somehow? Or did you get it on your own? Uh, so, no, I, I, I convinced my dad to buy me it. <laughs> oh, I was gonna say because you, I know you also played it. You, you've you've seen enough of it, slow. Did you end up playing it fully yet? Uh, no, not yet. I still gotta do it. But I know I you were. The, you were, you also saw me streaming it and stuff. Like, like really amazing yeah. game. But that's like I said, it's a strange thing. I know it's my favorite game. I can, I like, there's nothing else that I can tell you, like, why or how, or whatever. It's an amazing game. I will never play it again simply because it has no replayable value. But I know it's my favorite game, yeah. even though I've played it once. That's just how it is. So, yeah. I, I still listen to music from that game. That, oh, yes, the music is that, so good. That game had amazing music. I will also tell tell that much. I also still listen to music from that game. But yeah, as I said, the strange world of gaming, how you've made your journeys. I hope you guys enjoyed living through your journey again. I know I've known my journey pretty well. Seems like Dylan rediscovered his journey pretty well because he remembers now gaming when he was <laughs> four and not 18. Uh, yes. <laughs> Marty, Marty realized he's been mobile gaming his whole life and he should have just stayed yeah. there. He could, he could, he could, he could still make YouTube videos on his mobile games if he wants to, but he's like, nah. Football, yeah. How to get free gems in Clash of Clans? No, no. Seen, ask him how to I get a negative gem areas. balance in Clash of Clans. Oh, dude. I don't know. That's all, but I still don't know how it happened. I, I didn't do anything sketchy. That's the weird part. Uh huh. Uh huh. Oh, I have minus six thousand gems. For once, you didn't do anything sketchy. Yeah, for one. Okay, yeah, just, just, just know, one. It does seem weird I didn't do anything sketchy, but this time I actually didn't. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And, okay, Slow had a, so... and Slow had a little bit of a heart-to-heart -heart with how he he kind of just admitted openly how he broke his PlayStation 2. We've all been there. But it was <laughs> funny to hear that mean... story. Rest in peace, PlayStation. Yeah, player. well... It's all because of Splinter Cell, man. I hate Splinter Cell. The game is extremely <laughs> overrated and it sucks. He loves Splinter Cell games. Don't listen to him. <laughs> anyway, that was our podcast. So I hope you guys also listening or watching this or whatever had also a great time maybe reliving your own memories or listening to our memories and be like, oh yeah, I remember that. So 
I think that's what all this podcast episode was about, to have a nice chill talk and have all of us relive and recollect and all that. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you for everyone who joined me. Sok, who just went off for load chilling, but also Marty, Mr. Sid Crackers, and Mr. Slowly. You were all wonderful. Um, it was nice chatting to you all again. Um, yeah, thanks for having yeah. us, man. I hope you guys enjoy your weekend. I hope all your viewers also enjoy your weekend. Um, but yeah, we'll see you on the next podcast. You guys stay safe, and we'll chat soon.